Firstly, the project that's inspired this video is called Hot House and it's a sauna pavilion in Massachusetts, USA by Artifact Design and Construction. Right then, so to start us off, I've made a very simple SketchUp model. It's not exactly as per the precedent. I've used my own license to a certain extent added a little bit of detail in the cladding panels, little bit of detail on the deck, gone for this kind of slatted look there, added a little bit of light on the interior. And then <clears throat> what you'll notice is that I've broken the landscape down into little chunks, all with different colors. Let me just double check that's, that's right. And <clears throat> the reason for that is that it responds to D5's new scatter tool, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, I've also put a landscape, which is near enough a mirror of this landscape here. I've put a landscape on the opposite side so that we get nice reflections in the glass. Simple as that. So hit save once you've made your changes and then let's jump into D5. We hit import up here and we then import the model like so. And then it doesn't appear. You've got to click and then place it like so. And then move from imported to object when you want to refresh the geometry. So there we are. And what I recommend you do straight away is just drop down to a point at which you think your camera view is going to be. Let's set the focal length to at least 30, something like that. And then hit create new scene. This is just nice for when we want to come back to the main view. We'll make adjustments to the scene in a minute. Then let's create some very quick materials. I like to just search for speed. Increase the depth like that. Let's go for a gravel there. And then I like to just use this grassland. We don't want to use the 3D grass, just FYI. We could click on that and change the material template to a grass, which then gives us 3D grass. It's good to it's good to know, but we're going to be using the scatter tool for that. If you want to duplicate a material, if the assets window is closed, select one, hit duplicate there, like so. Then let's use a concrete for this wall. I want to go for quite a, a rough one. Just while that's downloading. Make sure to hit round corner for absolutely every material. Triplanar and UV randomizer is always a good addition. Then let's go for a, a metal, like so. But I like to turn off or clear the diffuse map and just use a, a block color. Just gives you a little bit more control. And again, round corner. Let's go for a glass, transparent, green curtain wall. Is a nice one. 
to start us off. We want to go for a timber cladding. Let's see if we can get something out of the box. That'll do for now, it's quite interesting. Down here, the lower the number for UV, the bigger the material. Make sure your base colour is also set to white. So there's no, or at least completely desaturated, but white gives you a truer reflection. If there's any influence with a colour, it then just completely ruins it. Uh, round corner again. Let's pinch hot metal material. Just place that here with a little bit of capping. Might even add it to that as well. Let's go for a nice timber for these posts. Is there anything that's a bit more worn? Just given that it's outdoors. I do like that beige though. So let's apply that beige to these posts and then in the UV section, again, we can hit rotate. I think that looks good. You want 90 degrees. Round corner. I've also downloaded another timber material. For the slats, although that's a little repetitive, does the randomizer help us there? Not fully. We'll come back to that, we'll see how that influences the image. The actual material itself is nice. Okay, before we get to the two materials that are missing, let's have a look at the inside. It remembers the camera settings, by the way, from the scene. So it was a 30 mil focal length there while I'm trying to explore the scene. Uh, another, another tip, by the way, while we're exploring the scene, Make sure that your dynamic is turned off and if the scene is really going slow for you, change it to smooth here in the real time quality. That just really speeds things up. It doesn't give you a, an interpretation of the render. And in order to do that intermittently, you can just hit render preview underneath it and it gives you a little sense there. Alternatively, keep it on precise, but turn the dynamic stuff off because it's just wasting memory. Ah, that's frustrating. Right, so a little demonstration of refreshing the geometry. Don't know why. Why has that not come through? Maybe that's because the back of it was the aluminium colour. So, to refresh the geometry, because we don't want the whole thing lit up, we right click, hit reload, and then confirm over there. Shouldn't take long. Again, we can use that material out there. Temperature is always a better way of doing it and go for like a warmish white. And then we want walls, wall paint. 
Let's have a look. Rough. Oh, do we want that to carry through? Well, that's quite nice, actually, isn't it? Let's go for that cabin look, actually. But I gave myself the option, nonetheless. Okay, back to the scene. Only 30 mil. Yeah, make sure your two-point perspective is on as well. Let's just hit update there. Then, remember to set that back just while you're navigating the scene. So, let's talk about bespoke materials. I want to turn this orange into like a, a core 10 cladding. So we go to base color map and then we find our texture. I've downloaded a couple of textures ready from Polygon. And then there's the diffuse map. Now, notice that it is being influenced by the color. I like to set up my SketchUp models with crude block colors like that. So it is abundantly clear of the distinction between two different materials, but it does have a little habit of affecting the actual textures. So make sure that you've got 0, 0, 100 in your base color there, come back to the base color map, and then that is a true reflection then of that texture. Normal, normal. Speculate is the reflection map. Roughness, you hit gloss, but then in the little settings here, you can invert it. Make sure the color space is linear, by the way. Yeah, RGB is only applicable to the base color. Have we got a little... No, it's nice when you've got an ambient occlusion, actually. It adds a bit more detail. But anyway, there we are. A little bit of round corner again. And then just to repeat that, let's select that soffit material there. And then we're going to use these planks. Base colour, make sure... but nothing's affected. Let's rotate that 90 degrees. And actually just increase the size of it a little. Normal. And we have got ambient occlusion for this one. What I'm looking for here, reflection, roughness, gloss, invert. And then a little bit of ambient occlusion. I like to just crank that all the way. And same again, round colour. Eh, round corner, sorry. Okay, there's our external scene. And there's a little bit of something going on inside. I think that glass is a bit too green so just desaturate it a little that's better okay now here's where the magic happens <clears throat> d5 recently released a proper scatter tool and it's one of the easiest scatter tools i've, I've ever worked with it's so powerful so to explain before we get into it, how I've broke the model up here is that we've got these tall backdrops and that's where trees and bushes are going to go. And that will remove any sense of seeing the horizon. And then this level here is then another layer of trees, which will be less dense than that. And then same again, this little um, strip here will be another run of trees less dense than that. The middle is just a, like an access gravel path for the um, for the lodge itself. I actually think that lump there is a little false. It wouldn't be that steep, would it? Yeah, something like that's better. Um, and then the yellow is kind of like the, the embankment of, 
of the little lake that we're on. I've just got another colour here just to give me a little bit more control in front of the cabin. So it's about, once you get used to the scatter tool, you'll get a little bit more familiar with how to break your model up. But you'll be glad to know that in the description below, I've provided a, a download link for this finished model and the D5C actually as well. So scatter by material. And then you can see that it highlights those two chunks there. Hit create and it gives you these little panels. You can break the area down, but we'll, but I'll cover that in a sec. And it's as simple as just going in to hit nature there to add content. Let's go for conifer trees. I have pre-downloaded a couple. And you just select them. And what's really clever about it is that it already gives you a little bit of variety here. So it already applies random scaling, already applies rotation and offset. Now you might wanna change the random scaling so it's more dramatic, so say 60 to 120 rather than 80. The rotation, you don't wanna to go too mad with the X and Y. If I go like minus 10, then the they really do lean out. But it is um, it is good to have that level of control. And trees do lean to the side in nature. You can also change the seed. And that just changes the randomization. So it's absolutely brilliant. Another way to create scatters is to go into the asset library. And there's a new little tab at the end now, scatter. And I want to create some waterside shrubbery here. I click that first and tell it where to create. And then just hit the create button. Look at the happy days. We might want that to be a little more dense. Alternatively, you can layer scatter presets. So we've got the waterside shrubbery and the wild grassland on top of one another. So you can add so much variety. I'm actually going to just use the wild grassland for the rest here. And just the, the, the variety in it just, oh, just adds so much depth. It's absolutely fantastic. Add it to there. Okay, back to the scene. You can see how this scene is just moving on massively. Then what we want to do, just make sure that two-point perspectives turned off as we navigate the scene. Then what I want to do is add more trees. So select material, that one there, create for the panels. Then we add a little bit of content. So back to the corner for trees. And let's just find some smaller ones like so. I love the way you've got the little people next to it, which gives you a little sense of, a little sense of scale. Now I've got a couple of larger ones there. I can actually reduce the probability of its occurrence, easy for me to say, just so that it appears less frequently. Also in the transformation, I can actually just reduce this to say 60 to 90 in the scaling and it just gives us that 
a little bit more variety. Look at that. And then, as I mentioned, I'm going to reduce the density or have reduced density in this front section here. Sorry, just getting a little ahead of myself there. There we go. To reduce the density, you just go to distribution and then change that figure there to say 10, 1, like so. Back to the scene. And we've got something very interesting indeed. I want to Again, just reduce the scale of those so that are a bit more visible. Now, what would be nice is to just take a little test render. But before we do, a couple of little tweaks. First and foremost, when we're in the scene here, select the little camera there to edit camera. And you can actually then alter the resolution of the image when it's rendered. I'm going to go for a slightly widescreen look, 4,000 by 2,000, a little, little bit cinematic. Two-point perspective. We'll turn auto exposure off. That's already looking better. Uh, oh. oh, I quite like the, uh, the look of the trees there, actually. Um, we'll, we'll sort that out in a sec. Aspect ratio is custom, yes. Focal length, yes. And a little bit of depth of field. Focusing on the cabin. And we'll just set the blur to five. I should save this off as well. Little folder, D5. Just call it cabin D5 file, something like that. Right, so we've got our camera settings sorted, okay? So deselect the camera. And then I mentioned about the, the lovely soft lighting here. If you hit this little button here, Studio, D5 Curated, we've got this list of standard, um, I say standard, the, 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 they're much better than standard, but like preset, uh, environment and effects so if I go for something like I want to go for like a bit of a sunset sort of look I think I did see one at the bottom download that doesn't take long double click and then bang. <laughs> Look at that. That is ridiculous, isn't it? Um, so we've got our HDRI. Now, we do want to use a bit of fog, actually. I want to increase the density to something like that. Just to give us that really nice haze. We can see repetition in, in the slats there, so we'll sort that. And the scattering of the volume light. When light passes through, it makes a light beam we'll increase. So let's just set that to 0.5. We do want a bit of wind. That'll come into play when we do a little animation. And we do want a little bit of precipitation as well. Strength just wants to be 0.2. It'll give us a little bit of variety in the in the water. Puddle, fine, yeah, okay. File, save, and then image. I must admit there are a couple of visuals there as I was practicing. <laughs> um, then we go image up here, we hit the little camera, and then aspect ratio, we can leave that to original now because the camera itself is giving us that information. Whereas historically, you would use one of these presets. So that's all spot on. Not going to worry about render channels just yet. And then we'll just render that off. 
and it renders in no time at all as well. So the key to good visuals is a bit of self-critique. And although this image is, I think, very good for the time that we've spent on it, there is still a little bit of work to be done. A couple of things like the, the gravel path, I must admit, I th thought I'd updated that. Hold on, reload. Now, does that... Does the scatter follow the surface? No, look at that. Uh, so, so something to be mindful of there. That we're... So you can edit the surface, so let's just have a look. So that one wants to go. I actually think in the transformations, let's just change that to 60, 90, just to bring that down a little bit. That one looks okay, it's so it's that one that needs to go. Okay, no problem. So we we've flattened that path off because it was just a little a little silly. Let's just go back to the scatter preset and just place the grassland back on there. I think you could have just used the edit area, I must admit, but it's that fast. Let's just do it this way to be to be certain. Ah, right. Now, a mistake I've made, I'll leave that in, is I didn't hit refresh there when I applied this lovely look to it. So we've got it back quite quickly, but you want to hit update scene there just so we don't lose that again. Okay, so yeah, that looked a bit false. See where it's a bit steep there. I've flattened it out now and a little lifeless. So let's go back out here. And you can also scatter. Different objects. <clears throat> such as fallen leaves. And stones. So if we just do a couple of these. So see the way we, we've added stones, leaves. I want to just drop the probability of the leaves to say like 30%. Yeah, 30%. Because I do want to increase the density generally. Now, notice that the, the placement of all this is, is quite linear. So that's where these areas come into it. So you create an area, there's presets, and all this has noise to it. And it creates these sub areas. And it's within these sub areas that you can then add say the stones distribution. And it just starts to make it a bit more random. You can also with the offset here make it a little more drastic. And that just breaks it up even further. 
in this other area we could we could just put the leaves and so on and so on you get the idea although again that still looks too rigid doesn't it Oh, that's the leaves. I still like that though, actually. Let's go, let's go 500. So just playing with these sliders does just help a little. And again, the seed will probably help. And then within the actual distribution itself, there are further patterns. And I'm sure that that's the thing that will break it all up a little bit further. So that's better. It isn't as rigid as it was. And that's within the larger sub areas that you can create these. But it can mess with the density quite a bit. Anyway, so that, that gives a bit more life to the path. I said the backdrop, we can see. Let's go in assets and type in mountain. And we've got this backdrop that we can add to the scene. Let's just scale it down. So like the way with it, with it selected, we can we can see its position. Where's the inspector? There we go. I think we do want to mess with the scale a little. So that's better. So it should that should get rid of the horizon line completely. Also on the precedent there were trees in front of the cabin. So let's just Download a couple more, some with like tall trunks. There we go. And then, even though the scatter tool is fantastic, there's nothing wrong with. A little bit of manual placement as well. If the scale uh, little widget here is a bit of a pain for you, you get more control with the actual key entries there. And just having this forgive the sirens. The UK is a little knackered at the minute. <laughs> um but adding these these more detailed assets individually in the foreground really do lift the whole shot. 
Let's maybe just rotate that one. If you hold shift and move, it then creates a copy. So I think that's quite nice. Another amazing thing with the scatter tool is that you can add objects to water. And they are called aquatic plants. I've downloaded a few, I'm sure. Here we go. Distribution, let's just mess with that. That's probably a little too dense. That adds a bit of realism, doesn't it? There we go. See the way we've broken up, well, a little bit. I was going to say we've broken up the linear distribution. Yeah, that's good. In the environment, just need to turn things back up and on. We had a, lo a lovely bit of fog, didn't we? Look at that. Scattering. 0.5. Wind strength, 0.2. And we added a little bit of rain. Look at the variety that brings to the water. And it also brings it to the... Just make sure we hit refresh. It also brings it to the path. I actually think... I want that path material to be a little darker as well. It's just far too bright. That's better. By the way, a point I wanted to make here as well is that with visualization tools like this now, for an architect, it's just so nice to be able to explore your designs, test them, quickly show them off. And it, it, it is, in our practice, it's improving our, even like profitability, actually. Um, it's improving our um, chance of winning new projects and things like that when we go for pitches. And it's also improving how quickly we can sort of demonstrate early stages of design as well. So I just want to get that across the, it isn't just about creating good visuals. There is actually good business sense to, to use in these tools as well. Um, so refresh that. So I think we're, we're nearly there. I do want to add a little boat and I'm aware that there is a, a dynamic one that if I just turn on, The dynamics, look at that. You can really start to tell a story with your visuals now. The rain is pouring a little too much for my liking. But look at that. Right, save that off. Now what we want to tackle is this repetition here. Let me turn off the dynamics. See the way it's it's just too much. So something that I want to do first in the SketchUp model. This doesn't always work, but it, it has done for me in the past. Is I want to group all of that and explode it. Let's 
Okay. So that hasn't worked. Lovely. The alternative is to use a material that's just less prominent. This has got like a like knots all the way that all the way down it, so it's just so prominent that it's it's making the repetition obvious as well. So if we apply that. That is better. The UV randomizer just doesn't doesn't quite look like it's working. In that instance. I think going for a less prominent material is, is giving us something around the corner. If you wanted to really nail that, you would just go down here and just holding control and the paint bucket. Let's just demonstrate that. So if I just, again, just, you know, this is why I like to use obvious colours. You can break it up by doing things like this. These slats aren't as, aren't as obvious. Just like so. You could do a third colour. And a fourth if you wanted to really hammer it home. So then we would select that. Duplicate. And then just change the settings there to maybe like a 0.8. And just offset it a little bit. And then it, it does break it up if you just spend a little bit more a little bit more time with it. Oh, what's going on there? That'll stem from what we done the internal light. Talking of which That's because it's the same yellow. Silly me. Reload. Oh, that's already a material in the scene, but that's fine. It, that, that's worked. Is that was that the path? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, well, it's not little. Okay, so I think we've got a really nice shot there. And then all I wanted to touch on before I finished was a little bit of God rays. See that there? That's because the environment has got the volume light turned on. See. In order to get that on this view, you have to rotate the sun. Where is it? So we want to, yeah, so follow the HDRI, yes. So the rotation is 77, I do like that. 
What's a geoscape? Uh, it's not quite. Oh, we're getting some lovely, lovely looks out there. Don't look at that. Let's try that one. Um, let's just go and go. Two point perspective is so hard to navigate. I wonder if we could get a shot where the sun's like over there. Yeah, there we go. So see the way we're getting those god rays there coming through. Lovely stuff. My point anyway I'm trying to make is that god rays only occur when you're looking at the sun. You don't just, like, you know, at the minute we're thinking, well, why, why aren't we getting god rays across? Well, that doesn't quite work like that. You've got to be looking at the sun. So it's about positioning the sun and, and positioning the camera. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on was just the, the interior. It would be nice. Whoa. Where am I? It would be nice if we could get a, an internal view that looked back towards. Look at that. Let's add that as a scene, but let's rotate the sun and see. Oh, there we go. Look at that. For this, we would want the exposure increasing, not by too much. Just trying to get it nice and square. Ah. Just wanted that wall to be as it should. Nice timber kind of cabin look. There we go. It's not perfect. I didn't, I didn't want to spend too much time on the interior because it does take a little bit longer interiors. Um, but we could... I wonder whether there's a little... Um, modern fireplace. I just love the particles in D5. Right, so I've dropped the fire in the fireplace. And all I want to do is just hit depth of field. And the focus distance, let's just do like 100 meters, just so it's definitely looking out. The size, again, we want to go 4,000 by 2. Nice and cinematic look to it. We could, could increase, so we could give the glass a thickness. I do quite like that. Where are we? What am I looking for? Specular. <laughs> so you could make it more reflective. 
maybe go 0.6. You could look for a, if you type in like a water normal map, it gives you a, like a, a ripple effect. I go for something like that. Just save that to the desktop. And in the normal here, we can add that and it creates variety in the glass. And that is important because glass is never perfectly flat. But you've just got to be very, very subtle with it. But that is much more realistic. So there's a little interior. There's an exterior. We've spoke about how to render a still. Let's talk about rendering a quick video. Now they have got these camera presets. I do quite like that, but personally, I prefer a little bit of control. Let's do something a little cinematic. Where we pull away from the, the boat. Let's get rid of the two point perspective. And in clip one, we just do add current view. Let's zoom out a little bit, but stick to the water. And then you just hit the next little camera to make the next scene. Change the duration to say 10 seconds. And there we go, boat moving. Little bit of rain dropping. I think that boat wants to be a little higher. And there we are. Change the resolution, 2K frame rate, nice. Go for a nice 60 FPS and then hit render. You can also render it to a sequence as well. It's just so you've got a bit more control in, in post-production in like an After Effects or a, a Premiere Pro as well. You simply hit render, save to a location, happy days. So that's it really. If you wanna learn more about Arcademia, please head over to arcademia.com. We teach everything to do with architecture, design, project management, ArcViz, and so much more. Uh, please like and subscribe as well. Helps the channel grow and, and helps this video reach more people. And if you want to ask me a direct question, drop me an email at adam at arcademia.com. And remember, everything um, that we touched on in this video can be downloaded in the description below. Cheers.